What's up, guys? This is Ian here, coach of your Ladner Lantern, bringing you guys the team builder portion of our first match for the NPL tryout tournament, taking on Turkey. Um, I'm not entirely sure what Turkey's team name is. I didn't see a logo posted, so I'm just going to assume that there isn't one um, and go from there. I'm sure I'm sure he's got one, but I'm, I don't really want to be pushy and like ask for one. So um, we're just going to go like this. And realistically, the text looks fine to me. So we're just going to roll with it. So uh, let's run through Turkey's team first. Normally, I would have like speed tiers and a team screenshot thrown up there, but I already figured that... It's gonna be a little bit more fancy with uh, with the gifts of my my team down below, anyways. So, just pay attention, and I'll read it off. <laughs> uh, Mega Glade, Greninja, Zapdos, Nido Queen, Entei, Salamence, Bronzong, Whimsicott, Quagsire, Hariyama. Salamence and Whimsicott both being Z users. Priority options in Mega Glade with Shadow Sneak, Greninja with Water Shuriken. Nido Queen with Sucker Punch. Oh, Greninja also with uh, Shadow Sneak. Uh, Nido Queen with Sucker Punch. Entei with Extreme Speed. Hariyama with Fake Out and Bullet Punch. Hazard Setting in Greninja with Spikes, Toxic Spikes. Nido Queen with Rocks. T Spikes and. Um, yeah, with Nido Queen as well. And then Bronze on with Rocks. Removal options in Zapdos with Defog. Ments with Defog, technically. And Women's Cop with Defog. You probably won't ever see Ments with Defog, though. Four times weaknesses in Salamence to Ice, Whimsicott to Poison, and Quagsire to Grass, so I've prepped accordingly there. Now, um, very interesting matchup. This is a mirror match for Mega Glade and Nidoqueen, so pretty interesting to see there. Uh, and we'll just sort of see how things play out in the battle, but definitely prepared for that sort of situation. So, uh, up first is Kyurem Black, Sick Kyurem Bliet. Um... Leftover set, I just figured I wanted a little bit more of a defensive, uh, especially offensive, de defensive, especially offensive set this week, um, this week, oh my god, this match, um, yeah, turns out Turkey's team has, what is that, like, six of the nine mons, six of the ten, six of the ten mons, all outspeed Kieran Black naturally, uh, and everything else I don't need speed for, so, that's kind of the idea with Kieran Black, is that I'm cutting my losses and just going for it. I could outspeed something like Adam and Entei, but I don't care enough. Um, like, I, I don't know. It, it doesn't bother me enough for me to do that. So that is the plan skis there. I totally forgot to color that in on my own dock. There we go. Yeah, Ice Beam hits a lot of stuff really hard. Best way to hit things like Ments and the Zapdos. Um, Needle Queen as well. Really solid way to hit my Glade. Hariyama if it's thick fat, probably not. I could maybe have like Dragon Pulse on there, but I didn't think that it was really worth it. Uh, Ice Beam also hits the Whimsicott. Earth Power is there for the Bronzong and the Entei. And then HP Grass for the Quagsire, just in case it wanted to sit in front of me. Uh, and then I could also hit the Greninja with HP Grass as well. Uh, Roost just for recovery, max HP, max special attack. Pretty basic. Pretty basic stuff. A little bit of defense investment there. Not that I would uh, want that by any means. Um, then we've got the Spooter here, uh, bringing Peter Parker the Spooter uh, with Light Clay. So interesting, uh, I'm just running like Light Screen with Light Clay. Um, I, I didn't really see a need for anything more than that, right? So Thunder, like Raw Thunder hits a lot of the team really well. Sticky Webs for just some speed control. Uh, he's got some, like, floaters and flyers, but uh, a lot of his team is grounded, and webs can help me get some speed control there with uh, things like the Mega Glade, um, especially since we might, we're might we going to be speed tying it with my own Mega Glade. Um, energy Ball for the Quagsire so I don't get hard walled, and I guess it'll technically hit the Nido Queen as well, but realistically I'll just set up an, a light screen in front of the Nido, the, Nido Queen. Oh my goodness, I can't talk. Uh, speed Investment is there for the Salamence. I'm outrunning Salamence uh, with this... Speed investment, uh, which isn't only Salamence, because he's also got the Entei at base 100 and the Zapdos at base 100. So I'm outspeeding all three of those with the, with the uh, Galvantula here. Max HP for a little bit of extra bulk. And then the special attack investment. Primarina's next. I'm bringing a Scarf Primarina. This is actually really important that I have the Scarf Primarina in this game. Um, it's built to revenge kill the Glade, and I think it's going to catch him off guard. I can't imagine a situation where he would ever predict Scarf Primarina against his team. Um, he, he maybe should, because I'm bringing it, but who knows. Um, yeah, Shadow Ball is there for the Bronzong, because it, you know, it eats the other hits pretty well. Moonblast hits a lot of the team really hard. Energy Ball there, primarily for the Quagsire, and 
that's probably the only thing I would ever hit it with. And then I'm going ballsy and I'm running Hydro Pump over Surf. Um, it's a guaranteed two shot on max HP Zapdos, which is kind of like a big deal. Um, so that's what I'm running Hydro Pump for over the Surf. Uh, and we'll see if I ever click Hydro Pump. I don't know. It's a little bit risky. Moonblast is an all right job depending on what comes. Enough speed on the Primarina. Um, to outrun Mega Gallade, that's the only idea there. I'm not actually outrunning uh, Greninja. I don't think that it's actually possible for me to outrun Greninja, scar uh, Greninja with my own Scarf. Um, I think I ran through into the Calc and I couldn't outspeed it, so I figured, what the hell, uh, why would I even bother? And so I just sped crept Mega Gallade uh, after my Scarf boost there. So max HP a little bit, be uh, sorry, max special attack. Pardon, a little bit of HP investment. The roll is like 75% chance to Oko a Mega Gallade at full, um, assuming he's running max speed, which I think he would be to speed time my own Mega Gallade. Um, and then Moonblast will blow it back. So that's that. Maverick, we are bringing a no item Tornado uh, Incarnate this game. With Prankster, I wanted to run. Uh, I thought I wanted to run Defiant, uh, but I can't remember why. Oh, no, I wanted to get Prankster Defogs off. That's what it was. So T-Spikes are going to be really annoying. So I want to get Prankster Defogs off. Same with Rocks. Um, and then I've got no item acrobatics with U-Turn Knockoff. Could have run a Berry. Uh, but I'm outspeeding Mega Gallade with the speed investment. And acrobatics with no item is just going to bop it. So um, I figured why the heck not just like leave it like this. Uh, same thing with Whimsicott. We just absolutely destroy Whimsicott with this. Um, Zapdos is a really easy switch in for him pretty much every single time. So we got to hope that we don't get Static Paralyzed. Because uh, I am running physical and special didn't look as good, especially when my Glade has uh, decent special defense. Uh, and Hariyama might run like an assault vest to take on Kieran Black or something like that, so who knows. Um, yeah, that's the Tornadus, pretty basic there. Reggie Rock, I'm running a Figgy Berry clear body set. Uh, clear body because I needed it for counter. Uh, you can't run sturdy plus counter together, it's incompatible, so. I have the counter there. Figgy Berry is just for some recovery. And then I've got Stealth Rock, Stone Edge, and Toxic. Rocks are pretty clutch here uh, against the Entei, the Zapdos. Like, all the base 100s are weak to rocks, so pretty important. Stone Edge, it offers a lot of damage against the things like the Salamence. <laughs> Salamence is the main thing. Uh, I've got counter on there for the Mega Glade, so plus two. I will not die to a close combat, and counter will blow it back. Um, and that, yeah, because I figured I actually didn't need Chopple Berry, so... Plus two, I'll live the hit, I'll get my Figgy Berry back, and I'll counter, uh, and counter will be able to kill my Glade, although uh, this seems to be a little bit more popularized lately, the Reggie's running counter, so I'm not super stoked about having to use it, but it's kind of my best way to check my Glade defensively. Um, and then I've got Toxic there to wear down the Zapdos. I cannot touch the Nidoqueen or the Bronzong, so um, that's a little bit scary, but Toxic wears down the Quagsire as well. Uh, I can't remember the exact investment, what it's for. I'm pretty sure my 88 investment is to secure a KO with Stone Edge on something in the attack investment. And I'm pretty sure I just put the rest into Spit F because I didn't need the physical defense to take on Gallade. Um, again, I can't remember exactly what it's for. I built this a little while ago, so I'm struggling to remember. <laughs> And I didn't make any notes like I normally do for tournament matches. I just built uh, a regular prep doc like I would for uh, for any league. Uh, last but not least, I've got Mega Glade here. We're bringing Ice Punch for the Zapdos and the Salamence. That's also there for the Whimsicott's uh, Close Combat and Zen Headbutt. Nice dual stab. Zen Headbutt gives me a decent way to hit the Hariyama and a uh, way to hit his own Mega Glade. And um, then I've got Taunt there just for various purposes. I can taunt the... Bronzong and threaten it with a knockoff that's non-existent, taunt the native queen and then bop it with a Zen headbutt. Um, things of that nature can taunt the Quagsire from recovering, taunt the Zeptus from roosting, taunt the Salmons from dragon dancing. Um, taunt's just an amazing move, so that's what that's there for. And then I am speed tying his Mega Gallade with my Gallade, uh, with my Mega Gallade, and that's what the speed investment's there for. So that is going to be it for me. But uh, you guys will see this edited together with the match, and so hopefully you enjoy the match. And welcome back after that lovely cut. I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. Uh, my editing skills are brand new, so I'm sure that it'll be absolutely fantastic. All right, uh, bring you guys into the battle here. So this is our match taking on Turkey. Um, <clears throat> very interesting team. I was not expecting the Salamence to come. 
I think Salamence Whimsicott, I was not expecting to come, and both of them showed up. Um, Bronzong makes a ton of sense against me. I'm really surprised not to see Nidoqueen or Greninja. I think Greninja in particular, just because... Well, actually, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I know Jirachi had, like, kind of an ass matchup, so obviously I wasn't bringing that. I'm not surprised to see the Mega Glade Mirror matchup here. That's the first Mirror matchup of the uh, of the tournament for me. Um, Quagsire, I'm a little bit surprised not to see, just for the Mega Glade. It kind of beat Mega Glade, but then again, Terravolt, uh, Terravolt, Kieran Black was, was there. Um, as well as a bunch of grass options, and Vileplume looked really strong against the... Quagsire in particular, uh, all, granted Valplume looked like garbage against the Salamence, the Entei, and the Megalade. Uh, and then Hariyama, I don't know what happened to Hariyama. Um, I guess he wasn't predicting me to bring Umbreon, so didn't want to bring double fighting. Uh, make, make sense, make sense. Okay, so yeah, that's what I'm seeing here. Uh, biggest thing at Team Preview is that Scarf Primarina looks absolutely amazing. Possibly a win con. Regirock, uh can't do a lot uh, realistically like Regirock can't touch the Bronzong uh, Whimsicott and Zapdos are issues for the Regirock because obviously I'm not built to take them on 1v1 but it's definitely going to be my way to beat the Gallade and the Salamence and I can handle the Entei as well Galvantula with the light screen not looking as hot as I thought it was going to with things like Nidoqueen and Greninja not coming. So Reflect would have been better if it even gets Reflect just to handle the way this team looks. And then my Kieran Black, obviously, like I said before, it was kind of lacking in the speed investment, but Ice Beam looks really strong against this team. So uh, we're just going to hop right into things here then. I'm going to lead off with my Galvantula. Pretty easy lead. Uh, webs don't look fantastic, but there comes the Moonblast, and I opt to get up my light screen turn one. Um, glad that I did, because that Moonblast did more than I was expecting. It's like invested, I think. Uh, or it might have been uninvested. I can't remember now. Galvantula is like pretty weak, so I wasn't sure what to expect there. <laughs> uh, the special attack drop would have sucked had I, had I gone for any kind of move. Um, and then here, I believe I clicked webs. But I get Encored into Light Screen, so there's another turn of Light Screen down as so I'm just going to swap into my Tornadus. Pretty easy Torn switch for me here. I eat the Moonblast for breakfast, and then Zapdos comes in, and we are going to get paralyzed by Static. Yay! Um, and Rocky Helmet damage. Uh, but I get my Kieran Black in, uh, which which is pretty good, because Ice Beam comes off and it, it beats a lot of this team down. So Static there kind of sucked. I know... All about static. I use Zapdos very extensively in other leagues, uh, some of which you can see on my channel. So yeah, uh, again, really sucks because Torn was outspeeding the Glade, and it was a very reliable revenge killer uh, against the Glade. It was very reliable revenge killer against things like Entei with some chip on them. Same with Whimsicott and the Salamence. So I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, Zapdos was like the only Torn I answer that he had on his entire team, um, just just based on the move set that I had and. Now that answer is crippled, so it's basically worthless to me. Paralyzed. <laughs> uh, I could have been like Lumberry or something. That probably would have been a little bit helpful. Uh, and I thought about protective pads, but I wanted acrobatics. Uh, otherwise, protective pads would have been amazing right there. So Kieran Black's in. I just get to click Ice Beam here. There's not much really wants to switch in on it except for Bronzong. And I think, is this where it happens? Yep, I get the freeze. So really sucks uh <laughs> and then i popped the shokaberry on the earth power as well i'm sure he was going for like gyro ball and yeah earth power is just gonna he keeps getting frozen and we get to take out the bronze song for free uh essentially although he did burn all of my turns of light screen so pretty solid on on his part there and then i'm just gonna sack my tornadoes to this mega glade uh, he opts to actually stay in regular form for some reason and then shadow snakes wasn't sure if he was trying to hope for justified boost uh at some point before Mega Evolving, I, that was kind of what's, what was going through my mind, as well as him just misclicking. Uh, definitely a viable option would have been him misclicking there. I'm not entirely sure about any of that. So that is uh, essentially what's happening. Am I talking? Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, I've got all these gifts running around, and I can't find where my mic is. So, Torn dies, uh, and now it's one for one. Primarina gets to come in, and I revenge kill this thing. Um, I didn't have any chip, though, so he has 
no clue that I'm Scarfed, and still has no clue that I'm Scarfed, because I can't outspeed the Whimsicott, so I just get to pick off the Whimsicott with Marina. Energy Ball not doing nearly enough. And then Zapdos comes in. I don't kill the Zapdos with Moonblast, and I don't really want to be chipped by the Zapdos, uh, although Primarina, Primarina looks absolutely amazing here. Hydro Pump is a very safe click uh, at this stage of the game. So I'm just going to bring my Kyurem in on what I was expecting to be Thunderbolt, but it's discharged and I get paralyzed, so... Two 30% paras already, and then I get full parad on the Gallade switching into the Ice Beam. Um, I'm just going to end up sacking off my Galvantula here. It was really my best play as the Sword Stance comes off. So I don't care that I die to the Drain Punch, really, because uh, I know Primarina comes in here and revenges with Scarf Moonblast. Well, 75% of the time. Um, and he definitely was not expecting the Scarf Moonblast, in my mind. Uh, I think it caught him off guard there, and uh, he told me it was a good play after the match, so... I really appreciated that. What's left here is the Entei, the Zapdos, and the Salamence, and I'm going to make a crucial error here as he brings the Entei. Uh, I think I opt to go for damage on the Entei. I do with my Moonblast, and that was a big mistake based on how much that Sacred Fire damage is doing. Uh, that's Banded Entei, and he gets the 50% burn. Um, not really hacks when it's like 1 in 2 <laughs> chance of getting that, but um, a little bit salty on my part about how I played this portion of turn. So what what I was doing is I was preserving Kieran Black because I was max HP, blah, 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 but it's paralyzed. So what's the point when I can be like sacking Kieran Black and it's not even a physical Kieran Black, it's all special. So what am I doing not just going into Kieran Black right here and clicking Earth Power? Or Ice Beam. Like, it doesn't even matter. I could click Ice Beam and catch something switching in. Maybe uh, maybe I get the freeze. Uh, I mean, Secret Fire breaks you out of it anyways. But uh, it, it just doesn't make sense to me post-game why I made this play. It was so stupid because now my Primarina only has one turn left. And I'm going to opt to just sack it the Entei for no reason. Very odd. Very odd when my Primarina was, like, a very viable answer to the Salamence still. And a very viable way to beat the Zapdos. <laughs> so, yeah, I, a little bit strange. Um, Megalite comes in here. Zen Headbutt's going to kill this. I thought about predicting the Zapdos coming in with the Ice Punch, but I opted to just click Zen Headbutt. And obviously we're taking Rocky Helmet damage. Um, Zen Headbutt's not really doing a whole lot, so now I'm going to bring my Kyurem in on a Roost. Um, uh, there's ways for me to play around Earth Power and stuff. U-Turn comes off into the, into the Entei here, and I think I get full parried. No, I don't. Okay, so I go for the Ice Beam, and yeah, so, like, I could have brought Kieran Black in way earlier, and Ice Beam would have been doing so much. But here I get flinched by the Iron Head, so more hacks. Quite unfortunate, and Bandit Iron Head's just gonna be able to pick that off. Megalite comes back in. This thing is still isn't in range of Ice Punch, so the Zapdos is gonna come in, and I miss the Zen Headbutt. Quite unfortunate. Uh, Ice Punch is doing quite a chunk to the Zapdos, though, and eventually it looks like I'm just gonna be able to kill myself to the Rocky Helmet. Um, and then right here, I think I get paralyzed on the static. No, I don't. Okay, it might be this turn. Hmm. I, what I should have done is I should have taunted earlier, but now I'm just going to die to the Rocky Helmet, uh, and I get paralyzed by the static. That one didn't matter at all. The taunt comes off, Regirock comes in. I thought that I was making a good play here by setting up rocks, but it was, again, another misplay. I should have just clicked Stone Edge um, as the discharge comes off and paralyzes me. Uh, and now Turk is just going to be able to roost up and... I go for the Toxic. We're just going to chip the Zapdos down a little bit. And uh, Defog comes off. So, uh, qu again, quite unfortunate. I could have caught the Entei afterwards and killed the Entei if Rocks were still up. But now he's just going to be able to get the full para this turn. And Bandit Ironhead is going to two-shot me. So, quite the unfortunate game. I actually think I probably could have won this game had I preserved Primarina a lot better. And had I not been fully paralyzed slash flinched as many times as I was. The freeze on the Bronzong was extremely inconvenient for him. Like, don't get me wrong whatsoever. It was really, really bad. Uh, but that Zapdos got like three paras on me and I think I got paralyzed fully twice. Once was on the Megalade switching in, which never ended up mattering because it just drain punched to kill the Galbantula anyways. Um, and then the, f the, okay, the flinch, the Iron Head flinch on Kieran Black was important because I could have killed the Entei. Um, and the full para on the Regirock mattered because I could have at least pulled Differential back. Uh, and I also don't know if Salamence would have been able to kill me from the range I was at. And Stone Edge might have killed it. So Regirock might have been able to clutch that up. Who knows? Discharge got a para. Static got two 
Perez. Again, the one on the goalie didn't matter, but uh, yeah, that was the end to our first match. Well, not the first one that I played, but um, it's match number one according to the docs. So hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys for the other four.